In this presentation, we will continue on with our corporation comprehensive problem focusing in on the building of the income statement. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. In our prior presentations, we have taken a look at the construction of the balance sheet, and now we're going to move on to the construction of the income statement. Our goal to change this adjusted trial balance, which is in a, in a debit and credit format, to financial statements, the end product of our accounting cycle, which is in the format of a plus and minus financial statement. In a prior presentation, we have constructed the balance sheet. We started from top to bottom looking at assets, liabilities, and then total equity on the balance sheet. Many textbooks would not recommend first looking at the balance sheet, but I think there's a lot of benefits to doing that because we get to see the full picture, we get to see everything fit together, we get to see the uh, accounting equation working in terms of the balance sheet, assets equaling liabilities plus equity. The reason some textbooks think that we should uh, not do the balance sheet first is because we have to recalculate the income statement in some ways. In order to do the balance sheet, we have to combine all the blue accounts, all the equity numbers, and that's what we do on the income statement. So the balance sheet, uh, if we only wanted to calculate things one time and didn't want to put the math in twice, <laughs> then we, if we did everything perfectly, we can do the income statement and just have to calculate net income one time. But the calculation of net income should not be too difficult for us to do, especially if we have a well-formatted trial balance. And the benefits of doing the balance sheet first is that we get to see the whole thing working, see the double entry accounting system working, and then have a better check for us, which in turn, which is that now we're just basically trying to reconstruct one number on the balance sheet, that number being retained earnings. So in other words, we put all of these numbers into retained earnings on the balance sheet. We just kind of grouped them together and in the equity section. What we're doing now is breaking those out first by breaking out all the income statement accounts, revenue and expenses, the dark blue accounts. Then we'll pick up the last account, which is dividends that will be included in retained earnings in the statement of equity. So the income statement is going to be a statement that will be for the month ended as opposed to the balance sheet, which is as of a point in time. A very important concept to know. It's easy for us to start to memorize this, but uh, if you think about it more and more, you'll get better at understanding it's a really important concept to know that we're looking at a time frame. These are temporary accounts. They only make sense over time. Whereas these accounts up here only make sense as of a point in time. So in other words, it doesn't matter for the, for the balance sheet accounts whether we have one month, one year, or the entire life of the company because it's always going to be as of the end of the time period. It's as of a point in time. Whereas the income statement, it does matter. We need to know, is it for a month are we talking? A year are we talking? Because these are performance numbers. Okay, so if we look at these, then we're going to say, we're just going to pick these up in this order. The top line of the income statement is going to be revenue or income. Uh, it could be called different things depending on the type of business. If it's a, if it's a service company, we might call it fees earned. If it's a, we, we sell merchandise, we might call it uh, sales. Or we might just call it revenue and, in, or income. In any case, that's going to be our top line item. Now, we're not going to bring it into the inner column because there's only one line item here. If we had more than one income uh, type of income, then we would have two accounts, and then we would use a subcategory. But usually income, most companies will focus in on a few things that they do because that's what they do to make money. And then everything else will be expenses. So typically income accounts will be fairly limited, in our case, to one, which is not uncommon. And so, therefore, we're not going to have a subcategory. We're just going to put it out in the outer column and just say there's no subcategory. It is what it is. We also are not going to have brackets around it because it's not representing a credit. We're flipping the sign. We're changing it from a plus and minus or a debit and credit format to a plus and minus format. Now we're just going to bring over the expenses. Now note that I'm going to bring over the expenses as they're shown here. A uh, common question is, well, what order should the expenses be in? Well, one, we can try to keep them in the order that the trial balance is in, or we can just try to give an order that's best representative for our readers. Oftentimes, that's going to be represented by, we'll, we'll put the higher numbers first. Uh, but that's not always the case, but that's one convention that we could use. We can say, okay, 
the numbers that will be more important will be the numbers that have higher expense amounts. Those might be ones that we list first. We also just might use some type of convention that is typical uh, so that we can standardize our, our financial statements. Typically, we're not going to be using just alphabetical order because uh, that's not going to give us an order that's, that's uh, it's usually more important to order them in some other way it would be more useful to the reader. Like these are the most important expense accounts or these are the highest dollar amount expense accounts. So we're just going to pull these over. We're going to list expenses colon representing a subcategory. Then we'll have the wages expense. We're just going to pull those over. We're going to bring them into the inner column, not because they're debits or credits, but because it's a subcategory represented by the colon, represented by the indentation, represented by putting them in the inner column. And then we've got the utilities. So here's the utilities. Then we have the supplies expense, supplies expense, depreciation expense, depreciation expense, insurance expense, insurance expense, and telephone expense, telephone expense. Now, this, we might have some variation in practice. In other words, it might not be the case that we're just going to pull over every account as we see it on the adjusted trial balance to the income statement in some cases, meaning we may, in some cases, depending on how we format our, our trial balance, have more or less accounts on the trial balance than we want on the income statement, usually more. We might want more detail on the trial balance because it helps us for internal usage. So, for example, we might have wages for multiple regions, like four regions we have wages for. And we may want on our income statement only to have one, and therefore we would have to combine those accounts. But if we did that, it would just be the same thing. We would just have these four accounts. We would combine them up. As, as long as we find a home for all of the expense accounts over here on our income statement, we will come out to the proper net income, and that'll be that's what we want. So just note that you may end up in a circumstance where you're saying, well, the ordering of the, of the accounts over here on the income statement may differ than how we see them on the adjusted trial balance and we may be grouping some of these trial balance numbers on the income statement depending on the needs of, of, the, of the company that we are working with. And those needs are somewhat subjective, meaning how much detail do we want on the income statement? There may be more detail on the adjusted trial balance in terms of more accounts being shown that might be good for internal management usage, which external users of the income statement may not find useful and therefore will we'll combine them together. Now we're just going to add these up, the expenses, the 6,500 plus the 1,300 plus the 11,000 plus the 1,000 and the 1,000 and the 1,100 adds up to 21,900. We're going to put that in the outer column. So we had expenses, colon, brought all those expenses into the inner column. Then we're going to say the total is in the outer column, 21,900. Then we're going to have our bottom line number, the bottom line number of net income. So net income is, is going to be the revenue minus the expenses. And notice the format again. We're not going to jump around from place to place. The, this number is right above it here. We're not going to jump from this column back to this column. We're just going to do something with the outer column. And that's going to be this number minus this number. Also note, we're not representing the subtraction problem with a negative sign. And we're not even saying it with words. We're not saying less or minus the total expenses as we did when we saw it in uh, when we saw the accumulated depreciation in the assets section we told our reader with words hey this is a subtraction here less minus but here we're not going to do that and that's just some of the conventions with the financial statements this one is so common revenue minus expenses for the net income that we feel we don't need to add that that detail we don't need to tell our reader it's a subtraction problem so those are just some things you just got to get used to with the financials Many times you're not going to see the signs over here at all. Some financials will report them. Oftentimes, if it's not something that's really obvious in the financial statements like this, revenue minus expenses, if we've read, it, read a few of them, then it'll have an indication in words saying less over here to tell the reader, hey, this is a subtraction that you need to do <laughs> to get to the next step. This is where we are at so far. We've got the balance sheet and we've got the income statement. Now you'll notice that we've got these yellow numbers. Why are we having these yellow numbers? The yellow numbers represent for us where we can tie these statements together. These are, these are our 
check numbers. So we've got the total assets are going to equal the liabilities and equity. That's our major check to see that we are in balance. How do we check that, that the income statement is somehow related to the balance sheet? Well, that's going to have to do with the uh, retained earnings here. This one could be yellow too, but total stockholders equity. This, this equity, and especially this retained earnings, is going to be broken out into its components on the income statement and statement of equity. We can't see it yet because this 5,600 includes all of these numbers. And the income statement only includes all of these numbers. So we need one more step to see this tie out. We need this, this uh, dividends account to see how this net income will make it to this number and be part of total stockholders equity. So we found a home for an individual home for all of these numbers on the balance sheet. So assets and liabilities we found a home for. We found a home for these on the balance sheet. But then all of these uh, we kind of cheated on because we grouped them together into the retained earnings. Now we found a separate home for all of these numbers, revenue and expenses, on the income statement. The only thing we have not found a separate home for is dividends. And if there was a beginning balance, which there would be if it wasn't the first month of operations, the beginning balance for retained earnings, we will find a home for those on the statement of stockholders' equity. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.